Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, Kikapi Games um, YouTube channel and uh, today as you can see from the title I'll be doing some quick review of uh, what had transpired last night uh, during the uh, number uh, the, during the fifth Pegaxi Insider live stream made by uh, no other than the co-founder and CMO of Pegaxi, Mr. Corey Wilton. I was so excited because he mentioned at the start that he's also from Australia. So um, I'm hoping to really meet him soon and, uh, you know, chat about Pegaxi. So, yes, I just don't know where in Australia. I have a feeling he's from Sydney, but hopefully not. <laughs> okay, so there are, obviously this video was like, two hours and 17 minutes. And to be honest with you, I'm on, only on the halfway mark. I've only watched one hour and 18 minutes to be exact. But but um, during the first part of the um, video, if you hadn't seen it yet, he discussed major points before he went to the um, later part or majority of the uh, video, which is the Q&A. So, uh, yeah, let me know at the end of the uh, video if you want to uh, do a part of this because obviously I'll just be uh, recapping and uh, discuss um, the major points that he had um, discussed from the start to before the Q&A. And the first thing, the first thing that um, he discussed is about the uh, latest Valentine's event. And I have a notes here to make sure I won't miss anything. So obviously he said it's a massive success because of these 47 million plus um, tokens that was burned. And then obviously he, he, he also discussed about many people, you know, accumulated or holded this in the assumption that it will pump or it will uh, uh, become uh, the price token will be higher on that day. And he explained that there's a lot of people who had access to this VIS because obviously some of them or um, some of the investors wasn't able to uh, get some um, tickets. And he, 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 it took him some, uh, he, he takes some time explaining that obviously the token is not normal on that 15 to 20 plus cents price initially and that he mentioned there will always be losers and winners with with this um, uh, prices of tokens uh, going down. And he just said the losers are obviously those who came in late or those who bought when the token price was really high. And uh, he said um, he, 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 he addressed a lot of points about the current um, bear market that, uh, you know, uh, it should not be dependent on, on events like this. So he said a lot about this Valentine event. And then he also obviously discussed that um, about, because majority of the questions and com comments recently is the uh, ongoing sliding down of the um, um, PGX and VIS token. And if you hadn't seen my vid video um, recently, I also made a... Um, discussion about this and most of the points I, I, I showed there are uh, parallel and in line with what um, Corey had mentioned, including he, he, he always wants to reiterate that the prices of the token should always be external to the product or the game itself. So he always say that their main focus is to keep developing the game regardless if the tokens are up or down. So in short, he used the word irrelevant to the product or the game. So they're not doing the development or um, further enhancement of the game, the game because of the token prices. So he made that loud and clear. And then he also discussed here about the uh, liquidity pool that um, uh, some people, I think, uh, during the Q&A asked why uh, they should have put uh, most of the burned token in a liquidity pool so that the price movement of the um, uh, tokens is not as much. If we, know, if we had more um, tokens in the liquidity pool, and obviously liquidity pool also creates um, higher return to um, investors. 
and he mentioned about um, they have plans to educate more people uh, about liquidity pool. And then he mentioned like, um, I guess I mentioned this a bit as well on that previous um, video I had about uh, why um, the tokens are sliding down that obviously they need to convert some of the VIS tokens as USDT. In short, as on the business side, they also need um, money to you know, maintain their, um, uh, their staff. And yes, he, he said he prefers a uh, market which is purely uh, speculation. So he, he, he mentioned many times that um, it's like not the priority of the, the, the developers or the team is not to make the um, token prices high, but obviously they keep all these um, proposals and um, enhancement for the game. And then this is one of the big things that he mentioned, the theme is. Uh, and it's like a new platform for Pegaxi. I, I have a feeling it's almost similar to Apollo, or I don't know if they will. He didn't mention if it will be separate from Apollo or they will just um, do something like Apollo, where this will be the, um, where the PGX um, governance will be used or introduced. And uh, this is also where you can see the actual proposals for the game. So, and he mentioned about quadratic formula, about voting. So finally, like the uh, PGX will have its full utility as the um, Pegaxi governance token. So currently he said they're building it and I think they're targeting um, the Feb 28, which is uh, two weeks from now so as to speak to uh, also uh, launch this um, theme. So me personally, I'm so excited about this to check what are the proposals, that uh, what are their plans. So it will all be on this platform. Another big thing that uh, he said will be coming up uh, in the future is the satellite. So basically he said it, um, Pegaxi is an open source platform um, and I think someone approached them for uh, wanting to build other games inside the Pegaxi environment. So it's like he explained that um, there will be a lot of other games within the um, Pegaxi community. So when I've heard about this, I uh, first thing that comes to my mind is like the Central Land and Sandbox. That's what they're trying to do. So he didn't use the word metaverse, but it's obviously very related to that. And um, so it will be good to see, uh, you know, to, to, to branch out without, you know, going to another game, but within the game itself. So uh, he didn't mention how early will it be launched, but um, they said it's, it's, they're on the early stages of discussion with that um, partnership with, um, uh, with a developer. Um, so basically that's, that's the concept. And for me, I'm also excited with this because, um, obviously if our, there are new games within the game, more players will be coming in and obviously it will be another dimension, another part, another expansion of the game. And it will be good to know how will it affect, how will it affect the game in general? So he also quickly uh, discussed about the development cycle and team. And according to him, each feature that they release usually takes a minimum of six week cycle or six week time before they can fully launch whatever feature they want, because obviously it involves a lot of testing, you know, a lot of programming. And then he also quickly explained the two teams that he got from the the developer side from Vietnam and the global um, side, which came from Australia, Philippines, Portugal. So he discussed quickly how those two teams are um, doing their job and what entails with them. So if you want to know all the details, which I don't think should be much relevant to us, well, you can always go back to the video because he discussed like uh, what this team is doing and what the, uh, the other team are doing. And then he discussed four short-term impact. So when he said short-term impact, they wanna see how the market in general will react with these four short impact that he mentioned. The first two 
the first two is like um this will be definitely coming in i think in the feb 28 or in the six week times um the next release of whatever feature they will get but the other two is still in process so we they don't have an estimate launch yet but definitely the top two will be implemented in six weeks time so he all he already mentioned the cooldown switch or flipping during the q a i think it was that two weeks ago or three weeks ago we're in now um host will be longer to rebreed and the other side because currently zan is the one that it takes longer to rebreed will be the fastest one and the clean and the campona will also be reverted or uh, with the order so that will be uh, implemented uh, and obviously if you remember according to that q and a uh, to obviously balance the um, bloodlines because obviously there's more holes now because of that um, uh, cool down uh, breathing which you can repeat straight away after uh, four hours the second interesting short-term impact is the parent cool down racing actually he called it initially as adult cool down so this is just about because at the moment after you breed the parent pegas can race straight away now i think they will put uh four days cool down for for the parents before they can race again and obviously obviously the main goal of this four is to reduce the minting of this and reducing the amount of um, pegas out there which is the source of this minted um, vis okay because at the moment it's only breathing that has cooled down and the raising of the baby pega the number three which is we don't know yet when will it be uh, starting the pe baby pegas the newly born pegas will have variable energy between um, 10 to 20 because at the moment, um, when some uh, when when um, uh, a baby is born, it's born, it's twenty five energy um, automatically, right? That's why usually when you go to the um, uh, paid portion of the rental, you can see baby Pega with twenty five um, uh, energy straight away. But this time, um, they will reduce it between ten to twenty. The only thing that I noticed is he didn't mention if it's only on the first day that it was born or daily it will be like that. Like, will it be the daily um, energy of the horse? Like, it won't um, it won't uh, refresh every hour like the uh, the other. So I guess that's one thing that was missed or was not mentioned during the uh, discussion. Um, and then the fourth one is the increased racing horse capacity from 12 to 15. So as you can see on the racetrack at the moment, there is only maximum of 12 horse before it, uh, the race begins, right? But they would want to increase that to 15. So obviously it will affect the win rate of the horse and lesser chance to win because um, obviously it's still only three horse to, uh, to win. And again, uh, in other words, they're trying to reduce the uh, vis being produced. It's 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 uh, yeah, that's that's what he said. And then he discussed again about stadium quickly because I think there's a lot of um, questions surrounding it. And he just said that there are major proposals for the um, stadium, so it's still all proposals. And that's why I'm excited with the theme is because. On that um, platform, obviously, they will lay out everything that we need to know about stadium. And they said this is part of the uh, vertical progression. So they don't have a timeline timeline yet when it will be. So let's just wait and see. And then he also quickly uh, discussed about the uh, player controlled game that uh, many has been requested. Uh, he said it's not as easy to uh, do. Uh, because again, they're trying to avoid the uh, pay to win concept. So obviously, you need to pay something to make your horse run faster or win. So uh, we, they don't want that one one um, horse will be advantaged because they bought a lot of extra stuff that runs with that. 
course. So for me, I, I, I agree with him that it should not, we should avoid that, that um, concept of you need to pay more for you to win more. So he also mentioned that this is not the priority at the moment. Aside from it's not that easy to develop a concept, how it they can avoid that concept of paying to win. So th those are the pretty much the uh, major uh, points that he had discussed. And um, as you can see here in my notes, I'm just on the halfway mark and I already listed like 42, 42 um, questions being answered. So I'll be finishing the rest of the video because I really want to get it straight from the horse mouth, as they said. So if I were you, if I were you, go, especially if you're an owner, investor, even if you're not an owner, investor, even if you're just a um, uh, renter at the moment or a scholar at the moment, it's good to see where, where the game is going. And um, for for me as an investor, as a player, I really wanted to know everything that um, is being planned. All I know is uh, from the halfway mark that I had um, seen it, I can still I'm still bullish at the end of the day, um, regardless of the price um, going down after the event. Um, uh, also, aside from the fact that uh, he also mentioned this, Corey also mentioned this that people will eventually sell. We cannot hold to the tokens forever. So I agree with him with that. So there will be bear markets. Um, it's just up to us to, you know, it's, I, I agree with him. S speculative market is good in a way, but obviously it's also very risky because we don't know where the price will go. But based on the plans that um, he had mentioned and even with the uh, previous Q&A, I'm still bullish with this game that I know um, the development team are on track, on track on um, improving and enhancing this game. So yes, um, that's it for now. Thank you so much for always joining me. Um, let me know your thoughts. What do you think of what, what he just said? Um, let me know if you think this game still has a future or will it recover from this bear market that we're um, experiencing at the moment. Let me know if um, what do you think should be the priority of um, Pegaxi? Because for me, that's one thing that they didn't really mention, except those features that they will be launching on um, after six weeks or on Feb 28. So that will be the next launch, ma major launch that they will be having. So it would be good to know too, what are the priorities? Because even the food, they don't know yet, but it's meant to be Q1. So Yes, thank you so much, guys, for um, uh, dropping by. Um, if you hadn't subscribed yet, please um, subscribe. And uh, also for those who are um, wanting to rent and become a scholar, we have our daily promotions in our YouTube channel. Please um, just view those uh, videos to, uh, to know how to join. Thank you so much. Until next time, let's go and race.